What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 8 of our Intermediate Python Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is zip. The zip function takes elements from multiple iterables and aggregates them into one where we basically share the index value, let's say. So I think it's easier to understand if we just show it really quickly. So we're going to work with the following data as soon as I found my mouse. We say x is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I can't remember. I think I've covered it already. But in, in, according to Pepe, when you make a list like this, it's comma space. Just no spaces in the parameters of a function, for example. Um, but it's really tempting for me personally to do things like uh, this instead. So sorry if I do that, but in theory, Pepe should be like this. So we're just going to have some simple uh, some simple lists. You don't have to make them exactly as I do. Just have some lists. I'm just here showing that we can bring together lists of different types or data from lists of different types. Okay, so first let's go ahead and combine uh, X and Y. So what we can say is for A, B in zip X, Y print a, B. So the intuition here, what's supposed to happen is it's going to tie together X and Y. So we should see 1, 7, 2, 6, 3, 2, and 4, 1. Let's see what we get. Sure enough, 1, 7, 2, 6, 3, 2, 4, 1. As expected. So we can also do multiple elements. So we can say A, B, C, and zip X, Y, Z. And of course, we get the exact same thing. Now, what if we just said, uh, what if instead we just said we wanted to, to because in here, we're basically iterating over the result of zip x, y, z. So you might be thinking, okay, zip x, y, z must equal a list of either tuples or lists of uh, these pairs or triplets, I suppose. Anyway, um, you might think that that's what's happening, but it's not. So let's go ahead and look at what, is print zip x y z it is a zip object now a zip a zip object can be iterated over so of course we can say for i in zip x y z print i and we see um, it is tuples of the values okay so that makes sense. Another thing that we could do, say you didn't want to just iterate over them, we actually can convert a zip to a list. So actually I'll just convert this one up here. You can just say, I want this now to be a list of the zip. And we can print that out and that works as well. Also, interestingly, uh, it won't work with three values, but with two values, you can say rather than list, we can convert it to a dict. And now you have dictionary where the key is that first value and the uh, value is the second value. So we can also obviously combine zip with list comprehension. So we can do things like print a, b, c for a, b, c in zip x y z not too not too surprising nothing to write home about here um, but i do want to point out a potential issue that if you're commonly using this code and then you might revert back to a for loop and you're comparing the two and you're like what is happening because the for loop is doing something different i'll show you what can happen so sometimes it might be tempting to take this line and instead, maybe we're gonna we could write this. We could print print x y, and we'll just do x y for x y in zip x y. Um, this seems seems good, right? So we'll run that, and we get what we expected. And then later on, if we decided we wanted to print x, uh, is x what we expected x to be? One, two, three, four. Yep, that is what we thought x was going to be because we know that these are um, temp temporary variables, right, in a for loop. But hmm, is that the case? So what if we said for a, b, 
or print AB for AB in zip XY. And then we print A after that. So this, these variables, okay, we get A is not defined. But what if we did the same list comprehension just in our, a typical for loop? Well, we would say for a, b, in zip, x, y, print a, b. Same thing, I'm just gonna comment this out, but it's the same, it's gonna produce the same output anyway. But see what happens on the print a. Huh, looks like that a was stored. What's more is instead of before when we, when we said in the list comprehension example for x, y, or print x, y, four, x, y in zip x, y, we recognize that these were just temporary values. They weren't actually being stored. But in the for loop, they are stored. So when you say print uh, or for x, y in zip x, y, this will work. It's going to work. It's going to be fine. No one's going to lose their shirt. But when we go to print x afterwards, let me just comment this out. Um, it's, it's overwritten x, y. So you might find yourself in a scenario where you're not using list comprehension, you're writing a simple for loop, and because you've gotten away with this in list comprehension, you think you're going to get away with it here, but you don't. And then you decide that you're going to iterate again, like for x or for i in x or something like this, you're going to continue using that x variable, and it's just not going to work. So just remember that in list comprehension, these values aren't going to overwrite your original variables and in fact they're not even stored after the loop but uh, or after the full iteration is complete but in a regular for loop that value is stored and it's going to overwrite your old old variables so if you get in the habit of just using the same variable names as you're iterating over it it's probably a bad idea because you're going to you might find yourself in a situation like this so anyways that's zip if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.